Hey guys, so in the previous videos, we added rest assured dependency and we also identify, identified an application under test that we use for demo purposes, which by the way was a restful booker application. And the next thing that we want to do is before we start writing some basic rest assured test, I think it would be nice to do an exploratory testing of this application to at least see if the application is working fine or not right this is also typically what you would do in any particular project uh, before you start automating you would first like to explore the application just to see if that uh, endpoint or that that microservice is working fine or not uh, now before we start looking into the application uh, it would be good to read the documentation it says welcome to the restful uh, booker api that you can use to learn more about api testing or try out api testing tools it allows you to do some CRUD operations uh, that comes with authentication features and loaded with a bunch of bugs for you to explore. So it's also a good thing to remember that if we see any issues, we should also look out that, you know, are those intentional bugs, right? And another important thing to notice, the API comes preloaded with 10 records for you to work and resets itself every 10 minutes. So let's say if we created a created booking ID and now if you're trying to update it, and if you cannot, it is a possibility that, you know, the booking ID got reset because it resets after every 10 minutes. So with these things in mind, let's go ahead and click on detailed API documentation. Uh, let's open this. And it has got a bunch of endpoints. So maybe we'll go in the same order. Uh, first, we will try to see if the authentication token is working fine or not. Then in booking, we will try to see if all the CRUD operations like uh, get all bookings, you know, get a particular booking, uh, create a booking, update booking, partially update booking, delete booking are working fine or not. And then we will look into what health check is, right? So uh, in the beginning itself about the authentication, it says it creates a new auth token. Uh, I think it's zoomed in a little bit too much creates a new auth token to use for access to the put and delete booking. So basically when we will try to work with update and delete booking, then we would need the authentication token, right? But we would not need it for doing get bookings or create bookings, uh, which by the way is like a bug number one that, you know, anyone can basically access this API uh, and they can create some bookings without needing an authentication token. So, but for now, like this is just demo application. So, you know, let's just explore it. So to first create a token, you can copy this <coughs> call example. And if you're on a Mac machine, you know, you can just open a terminal, you can run this command and it should work fine. On a Windows machine, if you try to do the same on, uh, on PowerShell, it's not going to work out. So let me, let me show you, uh, skip, if I zoom in a little bit, if you try to copy this, it's not going to work out. So, uh, what you can do is you can open uh, a terminal. And if you open terminal, uh, then you can basically choose uh, not or show. Basically, you can choose, let's say, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu terminal. And in here, if you copy this content and if you run it, uh, it has now created a token for you right now the cool thing is we are using aqua and we can also do most of this stuff in aqua also so let's say if we open uh, go back let's open aqua and maybe let's create a new folder in under our test repository let's call uh, it as a new package uh, booking and in aqua actually you've got a new file type which is called as http request uh, we will call it as booking and in here uh, let's say we call it as uh, create auth token right and in here if you now copy this uh, curl command it has automatically commented it and it has uh, created a uh, call that you know if you click on the run button now it will run successfully you can see the response was 200 it generated an auth token so it is working fine right so let's go back let's explore get booking ids command let's see if this works fine or not uh, windows one get all bookings um, 
get all bookings. Let's run this. And as we can see, it also ran successfully. It is giving us all the bookings, 200 response. And you can also see the final response saved in a file named this. And you can either click on this or let's say if you want to see the location, what you can do is you can open uh, everything. And in everything application in Windows, uh, if you search for this, then if I say open path, you can see the path is actually inside the same project under .idea repository under HTTP request. So for example, if I go to this repository .idea HTTP request, you can see this response is basically stored here as a JSON file, which could be pretty handy once we start, you know, doing our decoupled test design. Uh, so for now, let's go back. Uh, these two endpoints are working fine. Let's go to get bookings. Control C, uh, Windows 1. And in fact, uh, we can say get a particular booking. And in fact, rather than trying to get booking number one, let's try to get booking number 485, right? Because we know that booking number 485 exists. Now, you can see we got a 418 I am a teapot error. Uh, and if you just try to do a quick Google search, and if we look at some documents, it says basically, uh, let's open this. The status code is a reference to a hypertext coffee pot uh, control protocol, which was released in 1998 as an April Fool's joke. Although this status code started as a joke, websites can technically use it as a response. So for example, some sites use for nates for requests they don't want to handle, such as an automated queries, right? So if we go back uh, and if you look into like this response headers, it is actually happening because of the content type, you know, being passed as text plane. And the interesting thing is, if I try to run the same command uh, in terminal, it works fine. You will see if I run it on terminal, it has no problem giving me the results. But so curl is able to handle, you know, the request properly, even when we don't pass the, uh, the header type as the application JSON, it passes it, it, it understands it correctly. Uh, but Aqua is not able to do it. But anyways, like I've already raised a bug uh, to Aqua regarding this issue. So hopefully they will do something about it. So for now, we know that the issue is happening because, uh, let me open this. The issue is happening because the content type should be application JSON, but instead it is coming as text plane, right? So let's just go ahead and uh, write it as accept application JSON. So hopefully this should fix the issue. And as you can see, this indeed fixed the issue, right? So now we're getting the right response. So Windows 2, these three endpoints are working fine. Let's just go to create booking. Uh, let's copy the call example, copy Windows 1, uh, create a booking, control V, and let's run the command. As you can see, we again got the 418 I'm a teapot error and the content type is text plain. We have specified the content type as application JSON, but I think it's complaining because, you know, it, it also wants us to specify uh, the content type that it, ex that it accepts to, expects to receive from the server. Uh, but just to show that, you know, this will work fine in, uh, in uh, in terminal, let's open terminal. And if I, so not this, Windows 2, let's copy the whole thing. And if I run it here, paste anyway, you will see it has no problem, you know, creating the content. So Curl is able to understand this properly, but Aqua is not able to. For now, what we can do is, if I just add accept, and application JSON uh, that should solve the problem. And as you can see, it indeed solved the problem, right? So there are some issues in, in, in Aqua, but I'm also like trying to experiment with Aqua. So, you know, uh, I'm trying it in both the places. Uh, but if you get any issues with Aqua, always first try it in, uh, as in, in terminal. And if it is working fine in terminal, then you know that it's a Aqua issue.
Uh, let's go back. So this is also working fine. Now we go to update booking and we know that this is the place where we would actually need authentication tokens, right? So let's copy this. Let's go back to ECMA and we will say update and existing booking, right? And in here, we have to provide an authentication token. So let's create a new token and, and run this command again. So this is the auth token that we need. Uh, let's update the token and maybe we can also create a new booking just to be sure the booking is not lost and if I give 8261 with the new authentication token and if I run it again it it went successful right it's a 200 application JSON and we were able to update the name so let's say if I give the name as my own name uh, let's see if it works and it did work fine. So my name is changed. So update booking is working fine. Now then let's go to partial update booking. Uh, let's copy the command. Windows one. Uh, partial update a booking. Let's copy this and let's copy authentication token. Um, that's authentication token. Uh, let's hope this booking is still existing 8261 8261 and this time maybe I'll you know give it my brother's name and let's say fine just give the middle name uh, let's see what happens it was successful so response is 200 you know and it changed this booking to my brother's name so this is fine so patch is also working correct and now only the last one is remaining which is delete booking so let's copy this Windows 1. Let's call it as delete booking. Let's copy the authentication token. Hope it's still valid. Uh, change the booking ID to 8261. And let's see if it is working fine or not. It is saying forbidden. So it seems the token is already expired or this booking ID is expired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new port post call going to get new authentication token right and I'm also going to create a new booking just to be sure that this booking exists 686 because in the past like I've tried this and you know normally we get these kind of errors when either the auth token is expired uh, 403 forbidden is when the auth token is expired and we also get other kind of errors when the booking does not exist if I run this, well, this is a bug. You're trying to delete something and you know, you get a 201 created uh, message, which is for post uh, request and not for delete request, right? So I think it should have been no content. Uh, and if I look into status codes, uh, let's say if we call it as uh, API status codes, and let's see HTTP status codes, I think the one should be the one that typically that delete provides is 204 no content or it could be 200 that you know that the request was successful but definitely not 201 created right so let's go back Windows 2 uh, where were we we were here so all these endpoints are working fine there are some bugs for example delete instead of giving 204 it is giving 201 but the endpoint itself is working fine. The only endpoint that is remaining now is the last endpoint, which is health check. And for for people who are new to the uh, new to the concept of health checks, uh, health check is like a special endpoint. And the purpose of this endpoint is to basically uh, tell to its consumers if the service is up or not. And uh, from a testers' perspective, this endpoint is very useful because, like, imagine if you have got fifty or hundred test cases for this booking application, instead of trying to run your test in CI directly, if you add a stage, like after doing all the setup for, you know, installing your JDK or Maven or et cetera, et cetera, before you run your test, you should actually have a stage which only runs this health check endpoint. And if the health check endpoint is, is green, that means the application is up, only then you should spend your time and energy running all the other tests. 
And, and the benefit of this is, uh, it's, it's more like, you know, you're checking for a test environment, if the environment is up or not. And if the environment is not up, why even bother running the test, right? So let's copy this endpoint, uh, curl URL, let's go back, Windows 1, and let's say health uh, check endpoint, right? And copy it here. And let's see, 201 created. So this is also seems to be working fine. I don't know if it should be 201 created. I think it should be 200 because the, the service is up. And when the service is up, it should not say that something is created. All it needs to say is service is up. It is okay, right? You don't have to give 201. So this is again a bug, uh, which typically you will raise if you are doing an exploratory testing. So I think with this, we have established that our application at least is, uh, all our endpoints are at least working. There are some functional bugs uh, that, you know, we should, we should keep in mind when we are trying to uh, create our test. Uh, but at this moment, uh, the exploration is done. And I think uh, uh, we should be, we can now basically automate all these endpoints. We can raise the bugs for all the findings that we have found. Uh, we can even mark them as, uh, failing or flaky depending on how they respond uh, and keep them as skipped in the CI until those are uh, fixed, you know, either fixed in the application or fixed in the uh, test. Uh, so with this, I think we can, uh, we can mark this particular uh, tutorial to be done. And in the next video, uh, using all these endpoints, we will try to write some very basic rest assured test a purpose of which is to show two things. One is how to use rest assured to write test, but more importantly to show that when you use that given man then syntax uh, from rest assured uh, without having a decoupled design, uh, how you know it results into a lot of code duplication, a lot of data duplication and creating non-readable test. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, thanks for hanging in. Um, see you. Cheers. Bye-bye.